fighting alongside death. Okay, well, um... Fight, I guess. Wrote that to me. Um, oh, I forgot to, uh, give you another weapon in your inventory and stuff. Whoops. Oh, uh, well. Oh, uh, well. Yeah. <laughs> so do I have... I do have some magic, but, like, not exactly the best of magic. So let's see here. If I just go ahead and put on the bow, then I think you just die. I think so. It reads as you do why for I don't actually know who I'm gonna S support for this playthrough. We could Can you S for Yuritsa? Can you? Is that an option? Should I check if that's even an option? Because we still like I don't have like an S support to side on for this playthrough, so we could always freaky put it to a vote or something. That's what we could do. Can I check like I probably can't check like supports here, I don't think. I don't think I can. Here about uh you know what? I'll I was about to say Yuritsa can go off to the right side then, but you know, I actually will have us fight alongside each other to see if we uh, get support points and stuff. Welcome to normal casual mode, by the way. <laughs> Welcome to the normal casual difficulty of this game, my first time ever experiencing it. It's certainly something, isn't it? Oh, I can, uh... Yeah. No, I'll give him a sword right now then. This is what I'll do. All right, what do we have here? Iron sword, steel sword, sure, those. Let's put that in there, because I don't know. Um, I can give him his crescent sickle, I guess. And let's, um... Yeah, again, welcome to normal casual mode. Here's the death knight himself. Big smackaroo. Nice miss. Nice miss. It sucks that his crit rate when he's in your party isn't as crazy as when you're fighting the death knight. It's like, uh... You know those memes about, uh, you know, some characters super overpowered when you fight them, but then when they join you, they're not anymore? Yeah, normal casual is created for clubs like you that suck bad at strategy games. It's nice that the option is there and such. It is nice that the option is there. It's definitely not my kind of, my kind of game mode, unless I'm bum rushing through the story and I just want to get done with like this and I, you know, can't be bothered anymore, <laughs> you know. Stabby stab. Biggest of spins. So. Well, it's nice to have the Death Knight on our <laughs> on our side here. I do have to say. Oh, there's a handful more enemies over there. Oh, I didn't even realize that one archer was there. Do you have three range? Because you're a sniper. Yeah, there's the bow range plus one. I'm just gonna make my way over here. I guess is what I'll do. Oh, maybe I should have switched weapons. So that I can counterattack that one guy. It's, it doesn't freaking matter. It doesn't matter here. Imagine this on Maddening. What of just me and the Death Knight? It would probably either be like insanely easy or insanely hard. I don't know which. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, that's a little bit scary there. Um, it's funny how crazy the Fire Emblem Harkos raged about the boat, although it was completely optional. What, normal casual? Or you just mean like the early days with like Fire Emblem Awakening with like casual mode there. Even though it wasn't the game that first introduced it. I forget which one it was. It was the, uh, wasn't it like the Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon sequel thing where Bob, the thing that was the remake of Fire Emblem 3 and it was only released in Japan? Or maybe it was released elsewhere? I don't remember. Casual Awakening. I remember that there, but the uh, game that introduced it was that uh, FE3 remake. I'm fairly certain if I'm not losing my mind. I'm not losing mine. Same issue with Soulsborne Harker fans or with people suggesting difficulty settings to be in the games. Yeah, I feel like, you know, let people play the way they want, you know? Like, I've had more than enough challenge with three houses at this point. Like, anyone who's seen my Maddening Classic Golden Deer playthrough knows that. Especially the Battle of Garondor Field and the Sleeping Sand Legend, I believe it is. Like, the amount of hours I needed to put in to overcome those maps. <laughs> Anyone who's seen those playthroughs knows I have had more than enough suffering with uh, Three Houses ludicrous maddening classic. I'm I'm done. I'm done with absurd difficulties in Three Houses. I just want to get this done. It freaking was, wasn't it? There were a couple battles in the uh, Blue Lions playthrough that like really, really sketched me out. But my goodness, the Golden Deer playthrough. 
Grandeur Field, Sleeping Sand Legend, the DLC maps. Those ones aren't as fresh in my memory because that was like before the half a year break, but I'm fairly certain the DLC maps for the Ashen Wolves characters were also similarly ludicrous and whatnot. Metroid Dread, Dread Mode, when? Never. I'll do the boss rush when it comes out. I'll do the new boss rush they're adding. I'm not doing Dread Mode, I don't think. Let's just like auto mode these ones, screw it. <laughs> That's what we'll do. Yeah, I'm gonna pass on that front. Most likely, I think Dread Mode is gonna be for some other people to do playthroughs of people who aren't me. Most likely. Unless I ever did it for like a charity event. That's the only circumstance in which I think I could see myself doing that is a charity event. Let's see here. Um, here, there, you can build up some support and stuff then. And then, uh... Sure, because, wait, do you have a support there? I was gonna check supports there, right? I was gonna check it for someone else, now I don't remember who. Yeah, I kinda wanna see that now. Um, now I'll just do that, yeah. I'm just gonna let the game play itself here. That's what I'm gonna do, I think. That sounds like a fun strat there. Yeah. Here we go. Something like this, but yeah. Dread mode with the oven mitts and a Wii rifle. I literally can't even. You know, you know, now that I say that, after I did Skyward Sword with a, with a Wiimote rifle, I, of course, you're using the Crescent Sickle in, uh, in auto mode. Of course you would, even though it's not really necessary. Gotta use the Death Knight's trademark weapon. Anyway, after I did the Skyward Sword playthrough and Skyward Sword HD was coming out and I knew I was going to cover Skyward Sword HD as well to you know cover what was new which spoiler alert was next to nothing um <laughs> i uh i actually did look into online to see if there was uh joy con rifles i actually did look into it and they do technically exist i think they have like the right and left switched so like you know if we remote is right hand and nunchuck is left hand and you know the Wii remote is at the front of the rifle and the nunchuck is at the back it's like the other way around for the nunchuck rifle i saw where it's like the left controller at the front and the right controller at the at the base it was really weird so i was thinking about doing it and having like the challenge be switch a root for the skyward sword hd playthrough but i decided against it because i was going to show off the button controls and how the button controls worked for skyward sword hd which was not very good but <laughs> But that was the reason behind that. But there was a time. There was a time where I was actually thinking about ordering a Joy-Con rifle thing. It <laughs> was the case. I will say that I have considered it before. Very briefly. For the sake of that. Ow! You dare attack the Death Knight? Only I'm allowed to attack the Death Knight. Okay, it's annoying that purple being off there. Oh, not conditions. Just like auto battle. Just go ahead and auto battle here is what we do. Nice. So yeah, I'm gonna avoid that. I could see myself potentially trying out Dread Mode for some charity event, but I don't know about the other conditions. Yeah, this is why I didn't have the Crescent Sickle in your inventory was because I was planning on doing a bunch of auto mode. That's right. I'm remembering now. Okay. Well, time to die. Yeah, welcome to normal casual mode where you can just put it in auto mode if you want. I can even skip the battles, but I mean, take that random bandit. Take that. Oh yeah, Bernie's a bow knight. I forgot. But yeah, Nintendo America just confirmed that it was not me in the Xenoblade 2, 3 trailer, but it was Mio. Huh. I know it was mentioned in one of the one of the streams by by somebody coming in and talking about that. How uh how that's apparently a different character, but is like related to Nia in some way. But the one in the mask was like for sure Nia. And the one in the mask before that was like almost certainly Melia and such. But Mio's got to be related to Nia in some way, considering all the similarities. Hmm. Tis interesting. Oh, look at Ferdinand Von Eyer out here. Out here dodging all that stuff. What you gonna do to him? You're gonna miss him. You're gonna do like nothing to him. Nothing at all. Okay, well, let's freaking continue letting the game play itself. Um, it reminds me of the one Xenoblade Chronicles 2 playthrough where, where you let the AI do all the battling. Yeah, it's an option. Unless you want to play on something like, I don't know, Bringer of Chaos difficulty. Maybe I should get him to put that Crescent Sickle away so he stops, like, burning through it. <laughs> Ten times where he really doesn't need to, you know? Maybe that's what I should do. Well, get healed for one HP. Um, 
Yeah, I was not planning on doing a 10 hour Xenoblade Chronicles X stream last night. It just kind of happened. Yeah, it was 10 hours after the stream crashed. So, kind of similar to how this Three Houses stream crashed earlier when we were doing that fishing, you know? I was not planning on doing 10 hours, but Xenoblade Chronicles X is just too dang fun. To the point that I was honestly thinking about streaming Xenoblade Chronicles X tonight instead of instead of Fire Emblem Three Houses here, but considering I literally ran out of uploads for Fire Emblem Three Houses, it's like, okay. Okay, I've got like 20 something episodes or parts of Xenoblade Chronicles X done in advance now. Oh, and you're using the Brave Lance there. Maybe I shouldn't be using auto mode. But yeah, when I considered that I was literally out of parts for Fire Emblem Three Houses, and I had like, I now have like over 20 parts done in advance of Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I needed to get my priorities straight about what game I was doing. Well, do I really need to put the Crescent Sickle away? How many of these battles am I really going to be doing in auto mode? I'll probably do the next one in auto mode as well, so. So whatever. Let's see here. Yeah, you can just use the Iron Sword, so I don't know why you're using, like, the Brave stuff there. Yeah. She never plays Xenoblade Chronicles X, but Lynn Craig's you up at every scene that she's in? Just with her whole... Oh, nice. With her whole personality or the food jokes? Because I swear the food jokes in that game are, like, way too overused in my opinion. But, I mean... Renown increased. Wow. Boobity bop. I do like how Lynn has the, uh, Monado pins... And the hair is like a subtle nod to Xenoblade 1. I mean, there's a lot of nods to Xenoblade 1 in Xenoblade Chronicles X. And there's even sort of some nods to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, despite, you know, X having come up before 2. Like the fact that, you know, parts of the life will literally look like the conduit, you know. Personality or voice acting is just so li is so vivid. I almost said livid. Pirates in the North. Yar. What's your favorite letter of the alphabet? R is a not half bad choice, but my, I'm rather fond of the C. All right, let's uh, let's do the thing. <laughs> is what we shall do. Let's just auto battle the pirates. You're using the. Why are you always using the best weapons against the enemies that don't need it to be used against? I understand just now how that happened. Maybe I should have like switched around my party a little bit. Also, this is why I don't have the sword of the creator. I can literally just yoink it whenever I want. You're using a mirror with a crit on this random pirate? Are you kidding me? Maybe I shouldn't be auto battling at all. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be auto battling. I think maybe my laziness has gotten a little bit far. <laughs> okay. I was, uh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, I think if you use auto mode, they literally just use like their best weapons. So, <laughs> uh, this random guy's gonna get meteored. Winning is what matters. Okay, yeah, I think the uh, I think the auto battle shenanigans have gone a little bit far. I think I think this might need to stop. <laughs> oh man, my goodness gracious, the greatest overkill on like the most generic enemy I've ever seen in this game. Holy crap. I guess, actually, maybe the most overkill would be that, like, Vantage Wrath Defiant crit build that I came up with for my Blue Lions playthrough. This is, what, this is what might actually be the most crazy thing I've seen. For the, for the Empire. Yeah, let's just do this. How about... But yeah, let's see here. Though you're not going to question the ethical decision to turn the 13-year-old kid into your tank. Yeah, that's something worth considering there. Is like the, uh... The tank that the game gives you is a 13-year-old girl. Is <laughs> the thing. Just this just this tiny little kiddo, essentially, is your tank. There are a couple other tanks that you get later on in the game. Like we recruited one of the ones during the last stream of HB. Actually, we recruited both of them, because like L, I think, is the other tank that you can uh that you can use. So I think we have access to all three tanks now, but we have to basically keep using Lin, because you know, Elma and Lin are the two required characters for basically every story mission ever, so we're gonna have to keep using those two. I'm almost tempted to like switch to a smidge of Xenoblade Chronicles X. Tonight <laughs> almost I won't, but a part of me is part of me is tempted. I know the importance of getting through three houses here. But I am tempted, because we're getting pretty close to Skells. Last stream, we wrapped up Chapter 5, which unlocked Overdrive, which is the most overpowered mechanic in the game if you know how to use it properly, which I need to refresh myself on. I actually watched a guide on it earlier today for a bit of a refresher, a refresher crash course. 
but yeah, so you unlock Overdrive with Chapter 5 done, so that's done now. And after you beat Chapter 6, you can start doing the mission for Skells, is a thing. So we can get Skells in the near future, is a thing. That's made me want to play more Xenoblade Chronicles X, quite frankly, is the thing. Um... I hate how Ferdinand Von Eyre isn't saying I'm Ferdinand Von Eyre when I select him. At least he's getting the crit to make it up to me a little bit. <laughs> Maybe at some point I should play as Lin while we're doing the Xenoblade Chronicles X playthrough. Like, we play a little bit of Zelma, but I still haven't tried playing as Lin. We can try it out. Okay, well. Hubert? Sure. <laughs> Sir. Why not? What a bother. What a bother. What an edgelord. What an edgelord simp Hubert is. I do have to say. But yeah. What you really like is the lyrical soundtrack of Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, it's very, very different. The soundtrack of Xenoblade Chronicles X compared to 1 and 2 is so vastly different. It's such a different style. But it's so good in its own way. And the, and the different ways that they handle the lyrics for like the different themes is really, really cool. I do quite like it. I do think that my favorite is the Overdrive theme, which we'll start hearing a decent bit as we start doing Overdrive more in the playthrough. Interestingly enough, the the lyrics for the Overdrive theme were fl via Fliegen is the name of the theme. The lyrics are supposed to be in German, but it's like such a weird dialect of German that I just straight up can't understand it. Like if I uh, if I look up the lyrics online and see like the full German lyrics there, it's like, okay, yeah, I can read this and understand it. But hearing it spoken out in the actual Overdrive theme, the theme, I actually can't understand it. It's a really weird dialect. Like it was only way later down the line where, you know, I found out that I was German and it was like, wait, really? That's German? Why, why can't I understand it? I got so confused. So, so it's like a really weird form of German. This is the Via Fliegen theme. Um, but yeah, probably the key we've lost in Via Fliegen, so the final boss theme and the overdrive theme in that case, both very solid ones for sure. Hiroyuki Sawano is so good at what he does, I can agree there. I can agree there for sure. Via Fliegen is German, but the Japanese singer just doesn't pronounce it even remotely correct. So that's what it is. It's just not a, so it's not a weird dialect thing. It's just the not correct pronunciation there in that case. So I'm not losing my mind. For a while, I honestly thought that it was like some weird dialect of German that I'd never heard before. And that's why I couldn't understand it. But, but you know, I kind of, Part of me does kind of like lyrics in languages that I can't understand. I don't like playing games with voice acting that I don't understand. Like, uh, like I know there's a lot of people that will play games like this and play it with, like, Japanese voices rather than English voices. Same for things like Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And I don't get it. I'd rather understand, like, the voices that I'm listening to. But for things like lyrics in a song, I actually kind of like lyrics that I can't understand because then it's just like the voice is another instrument. You don't have to pay attention to the words. You can just, you know have it go into the blur as another instrument that you're listening to, you know? That's the way that I see uh, lyrics that I can't understand. So I still kind of like Via Fliegen in that kind of sense. I do like listening to, uh, you know, soundtracks in games like this or Xenoblade 2 where, like, I'll like listening to the Japanese version sometimes because it's that. But I won't like playing the game and listening to the dialogue in a different language. Unless it's a language I'm actually trying to, like, learn and understand, but otherwise I don't really get it. Um, hello, hello, Reggie Bob. How are you, uh... How are you doing today? Well, I guess I'll do this for Ferdinand von Eyre. But yeah, you actually always understood English words until you noticed it's supposed to mean tic tac di diu tic. Why did I why did I say that is like the English for a hot second? I read I read D is die for a hot second. Tic tac diu tic. Is that a from via Fliegen or a different context? Hi, hi. Oh, you're gonna lay next to me. Okay. But yeah, let's see here. If you like the Xenoblade X soundtrack, yeah, I've uh, I've seen Attack on Titan before. It was freaking Carvia recommended it to me. Like, I've said, I mentioned it before on this channel, but like, I never watched a whole lot of anime until people started recommending some things to me, and nowadays I do watch some from time to time. Attack of Titan was one of the ones I did wind up checking out, and the person who recommended that to me was Carvia. Is the thing. And I'm caught up on like, up until, you know, season four, the first half. I have heard that like season four part two has been gradually rolling out. I haven't checked out any of it yet because I'm kind of waiting until like the whole thing is out so I can just be like binged after that <laughs> essentially is my plan. Maybe I'll rewatch like the first half of season four 
for like a bit of a, a bit of a refresher crash course. Maybe, maybe mayhap. Not completely certain. Let's teach the Death Knight more about lances. How about? My thanks. It's so crazy to think that we're teaching the freaking Death Knight in, in classes here. It's gotten good. Okay, that's cool to hear. Don't, uh, I'm going to try my best to like avoid spoilers for I know it's season four part two. Me even just casually browsing Twitter sometimes would result in spoilers for like Japanese episodes that hadn't been uh, a <laughs> become English yet. So that was a little bit. That was a little bit irksome. I had uh, I had a character death spoiled for me. Was a uh, was a thing. But yeah, let's uh let's uh, see here. Touching the themes you would never expect for it. It is also really crazy looking at something like Attack on Titan and Xenoblade Chronicles X and being able to like clearly see the parallels with the music. Like it's the same it's the same composer, but you know, such different or such different games with like such similar styles in terms of music. There, I mean. You could definitely draw some similarities in uh, in terms of the plots, I guess. But you know what I mean. You know what I mean. But yeah, that is just so well made. Well, I'll look forward to it there. I shall look forward to it. Listen to it and yell. The hard letters are kind of rolled and soft. It makes it kind of sound weird for Via Fliegen. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I uh, I can't understand Via Fliegen for the life of me. And there are, like, there's not a lot of German songs that I listen to out there. I mean, there's not a lot of song songs that I listen to out there, to be fair. I don't listen to a lot of songs with the lyrics. But there are, like, a there's a small handful of German songs that I do listen to sometimes. There's this, because I like tuning into the space of, you know, remixers and whatnot on YouTube and people who do original music. And one of my favorites in terms of German creators is Matthias Fitch, or just Fritsch, if I'm saying that. If I'm saying that correctly. Matthias Fritsch is a thing. And he does, uh, he makes a lot of original music as well. Some of it is in English with English lyrics, but a lot of it is in German. And his freaking German songs are really, really cool. So I don't listen to like popular music or anything like that by any means, but I love listening to game OST game remixes and original creations from said remixers that I, that I listened to. I don't remember how I initially discovered him, but I really started liking his original stuff. So that's like the one creator where I'll listen to a lot of, German music from that and his stuff I can understand like I listen to the lyrics of you know his German songs and it's like okay yeah I, I understand that I listen to freaking Via Fliegen and I understand nothing is <laughs> the thing sure let's have Hubert begin this seminar is he gonna tell us how to be an edgelord but yeah I uh I don't know about the whole resolution I know that it I have seen on the internet that it's something that people have been conflicted over when it comes to when it comes to that but yeah we'll see how uh controversial <laughs> is what uh when i eventually see it when it's out for the uh <laughs> when it's out with the anime and whatnot and then down the line i can give my thoughts on it maybe i'll give my thoughts on it when we're in the middle of fire emblem three hopes continue this conversation i'm not gonna remember i don't think i'm gonna remember someone wants to remind me they can but like <laughs> it's almost time to depart are you ready no leave it to me a promising answer Whatever happens, never allow your foe to see any weakness. We must pay close attention not only to Claude's schemes, but to the man himself. He's a master archer who wields the legendary bow, Fail Not. He won't fall easily. Fail Not? It's the relic of House Regan. That bow once belonged to one of the ten elites. Professor, do you know the true story behind the legend? The relics were created by the hands of mankind. Saros collected them after killing the ten elites. Saros manipulated the people of the world and defeated the all-powerful King Nemesis. I thought he was corrupted by his power. That's the history the Church of Saros maintains. In reality, it was little more than a simple dispute. Should the one leading the people of the world be someone with humanity? Or a creature that can merely masquerade as a human at will. In the end, Saros was victorious. The Immaculate One and her family then took control of Fodrin. I know this because that knowledge is passed down from Emperor to Emperor. And that is because the first Emperor is the human who cooperated with Saros, allowing humanity to be controlled in secret. Perhaps it's fate that you can wield the sword of the creator, just like Nemesis, the king of liberation. 
and that very fate will lead you to use that sword to stand against those who would distort history. <laughs>